Thank you very much, friends. You know, in every business, there are malpractices there. Why we focus on medical malpractice? Because medical profession is now turned into business, but initially it was never a business. It was a service. It's a different profession. Where the most important thing in the in the world, life is at stake. Where the suffering of a person is at the stake. Even a simple outcome of a disease operation is going to have a bearing on his life future, his quality of life, and the consequences on the economy consequences on the society and for the future generations. I always feel that if we want to know about a certain uh, condition or a practice or like that, we have to look into the past and say that how it has come and creeped into the profession. If we see medical profession from the beginning. It was a total one-sided affair. Patient used to consider doctors as God because the doctors never used to charge for the advice, never used to charge for the medicine. And how the doctors were surviving? Either on charities or simply by the grants given by the people and their doctors were very very poor persons but respected a lot and it continued it continued for a very long time and then it it changed from the art what has happened previously there was no cost in diagnosis when i entered into medical profession in 1977 there were very few machines Everything was considered an art. How to diagnose a chest, how to diagnose a tuberculosis, how to diagnose a murmur. We were giving extensive lecture, this murmur is of this sound. And some people were so expert, they picked up very fast. And they immediately they used to give a diagnosis of mitral regurgitation. Sir, this is having this problem. Abdomen was considered like a magic box. What to do? If one pain is there on one area, we never knew what system is involved. There was no sonography. So medicine was an art. Slowly and slowly, investigation started. We started examining blood. We started exam having x-rays and starting the cost buildup in the profession. That in order to diagnose, we need certain tests. So X-ray was prescribed, blood test was prescribed. It continued for almost 20 years. Then around 1970s, somebody thought about ICU to take care of the people. And somebody laughed at it and the what? What do you mean? What risk people are doing? He said, no, it's an intensive care unit for a very sick person. Slowly ICU came. Then CCU came. And ICU changed into lot. ICU started in every ward. ICU started in every hospital. And what was coming with it? The cost. The cost of building everything. Now what is happening? Critical care. What Medinta Hospital is today? Nothing else but critical care management. And this cost, whom to build? either to the government or in the private sector to the patient. So we find that a cost in medical profession started increasing and what has become today now? Investigations are too much. We are put in a blame that we are investigating too much. If any patients of undiagnosed fever come, we say it's dengue. The cost of a dengue test cost 1500 rupees. 
any other test 15 2500 mri cost now 5000 rupees cost of machine of mri is 5 crores if you want to build up a small hospital cost is 50 to 100 crores who is going to pay how much staff requirement it has gone like anything we every need operators we need uh, in ICU need nurses specialized trained nurses compliance factor is increased so many things you do this you do this you do this who is going to pay patient only where we are increasing now the compliance factors has gone so much that it is said that around 42 clearances are required to run in a hospital imagine the burden now as the cost in the hospital was increasing the cost of research was increasing previously there was no research now the cost of research runs into billions making vaccines making a polio vaccine is successful smallpox eradicated but how it has come has ever ever anybody thought how these vaccines are built up we got a vaccine for hepatitis a hepatitis b hepatitis c who is building who is investing in this we all want health care but we have to decide who is to pay and somebody has to pay without somebody has to pay research won't go further people not are not the people will, won't get good health care what is who is funding now most of the researches is being done in western countries US UK and none of them gets any grant from the government government does but not in that manner mostly investments is done from pharma companies so if we nutshell see who is running the research in the world and pushing the research it's nothing as for pharma companies who are investing billions and i can assure you returns are never guaranteed in research it's not a thing that you are investing in computers and your result will be seen in six months, nine months. There is no time limit. Failure rate is very, very high. So much control, so much things, clinical trials, so much money goes into it. Now imagine, this much of money is going, but this money has to come back. Who is to pay? The patient will have to pay. But what is condition everywhere in the whole world? India, everybody shouting. Doctors are charging too much. Doctors are charging too much. Drugs are costly. Vaccines are costly. But I am saying, it's just like that. In, there is a saying in Punjab that everybody praises Bhagat Singh. But nobody wants Bhagat Singh in his own house. So we all, everybody want free health care, free treatment, free thinking. We want excellent health care. Why government is not providing? Why private hospital is not going? But why are charging? Time has changed. Technology has changed. Research has changed. System has changed. From where all the money would come? No government support. Hue and cry is there when prices of health care increases. Now, how to recover the cost? The cost has to be recovered. Limited time. If we see the patent laws in the world, every time has a gen every time is limit is given. Pharmaceutical company has to run to recover the cost. If they have made a medicine, once it is out of patent, other pharmaceutical company will start manufacturing it and will flood them. Sometimes patent is three years, sometimes patent is five years, sometimes seven years. For life costing interest, there is no patent. 
that is why the concept called generic drugs now some of you thinking generic what are the generic generic drugs are there are there something different drugs no generic drug is the same drug i give an example if we see paracetamol is manufactured is a, is a salt which is given to control fever we all know it very well it is manufactured by all pharmaceutical companies under a different name somebody will say crossing some will say metacin every th- name is different and the pricing is different somebody may price it 5 rupees somebody may price it 10 rupees somebody price 15 rupees i'm just giving an idea so these are called brands which a company is making but there are certain drugs which are available named as paracetamol which is nothing as contains and as effective as metacin as the crocin or everything are there if the company manufactures and market a company a uh, product by the name of paracetamol it is making a generic medicine and i can assure you all the companies who are making metacin crocin are also making generic so why there is a difference between cost why brands so now you understand there is no difference between metacin and paracetamol or crocin they are all same but one thing is marketed 1 rupees one marketed 3 rupees one marketed 5 rupees this is the method drug companies choose to recover the cost now if you see the everywhere the human cry is made uh, i'm very open person i don't take any side i'm a scientific person there are medical council of india says doctor should prescribe generic medicine yes we agree i as a doctor would like to prescribe generic medicines to my patient only on few condition what i first of all, all i would like to give you what is current practices suppose as a doctor i have a choice patient comes to me i write crocin a brand item to the patient patient goes to the chemist and chemist says okay 5 rupees per tablet he pays and buy the brand okay he recovers second patient comes i prescribe crocin he pays 10 rupees goes happy third patient i write paracetamol this paracetamol should be available at 1 rupee now he will take my this prescription to the chemist i will ask for paracetamol will he get paracetamol no he will not get because chemist is not interested in, in keeping paracetamol because out of 1 rupees how much commission the pharmaceutical company is going to give him let us say 20% so he will get 20 paisa then what he will say oh doctor has prescribed this medicine i will give you better alternative and then he will give metacin which he will say 5 rupees he say this is better medicine this is much more effective one more scenario these generic medicines in india are not regulated beside good pharmaceutical companies are making there are a lot of companies who, which we call fly by night operators they are also manufacturing this paracetamol is a generic medicine the cost of medicine is 1 rupee and they will offer it at 1 rupees what they will do they will decrease the quantity of the salt means this medicine has got only a potency of 50 to 75% percent. 
and this person is going to give a fat margin to the chemist so what is happening my patient who is have suffering over a fever if he buys paracetamol generic of a company which is not good will not get a relief and i get complaint he will come next day to me sir your treatment is a failure now my my good intention with my good clinical judgment i have prescribed but i failed so whom to trust the trust again come balls comes to again to the brands because company will make it sure that brands has got the same amount of salt what is being promised on the on the leaflet now everywhere the whole effort is made we should write generic medicine generic medicine now you are the person to decide whether you are going to buy a generic medicine whose Uh, uh, effectiveness is not ensured. I think you would not like to buy. What I want to you are a think tank, and I through this I would just want to give the message that government should ensure that whatever generic medicine they are being marketed in the market has to pass a satisfactory level. Long time ago, what happened is uh, I don't remember that year. there was a uh, contract was floated by cghs they required paracetamol tablet in a huge quantity it was a big contract so so many companies including good companies pharmaceutical companies applied for it and you know the most of the criteria how the government takes the decision about tender lowest and the lowest was given to a non descript company to provide millions of paracetamol now what happened these good pharmaceutical company went to delhi high court and say sir we give an example the cost of 1 kilo of salt which is being imported is 1 lakh rupees and this person is giving at 75000 how this company is giving a discount and going into loss of 25000 rupees per kg of salt high court went into it and said what this stupidity government should ensure first that the contract which is being given has to be of a medicine the medicine has to be satisfactory and quash the government order this is the situation i am myself not aware sure that if i prescribe a generic medicine whether it will be genuine or not now so you recall the new that how the brands are created and how the brands are sustained to increase the margin another method is bribes are given to the doctors to prescribe branded drugs you know once a new drugs comes just like some companies are very notorious or like that and they will prescribe no doctor you prescribe metasin which is 10 rupees and we will offer you some amount of discount they are going to very fair system this system is so close they monitor all your prescriptions the chemist would say oh that dr verma sends seven prescriptions per day of this medicine when i was myself seeing some patients long time back the chemist nearby came to me and said lots of 50 bottles cough syrup ke pade inko nikalwa dijiye And I, 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 that's what I'm saying. The tracking is very simple. All pharmaceutical companies have got an agent, this chemist. They supply, and they will increase. They say, no, that doctor, uh, you are dispensing only one thousand tablets. 
Dr. Verma is, all, all, is now doing also a prescription, so you should ask for 1200 and they regulate it. Then another malpractice which this company is that, they encourage you to write drugs for a longer time. Just like if any patient of backache comes to me, I will ascribe that you take tablet Flexon for 10 days. But I may say to him that you take a tablet for uh, two months, the sales of the medicine goes up. Another problem is that pharmaceutical company and when say that doctor asking doctor to prescribe drug when it is not needed, just like viral disease. Patient come with cough, syrup, smoke, something high grade of fever. I know it's viral. And antibiotics has no role. But I still prescribe antibiotics. One course of antibiotics cost 500 to 1000 rupees. See the difference. Then, another problem with Indians, sir, taakat ke dawai jaroo dijo. Low way. Prescribing vitamins. Ye to khate ro. Iron supplement lete ro. Till you get, your body is full of iron. Low purush ban jaiye. Now, Another thing which has come up is health products. If great taxes, great amount of money is made in uh, writing uh, health product like Protein X. Protein X is a very good thing which doctors use. Once the patient is seriously ill, he cannot consume things. We want to increase his protein intake, but where is the need, where, where the protein X is now sold, Amway. Increased literature, writings sponsored by the pharma pharmaceutical company making marketing protein X to build up the body. They say, don't eat sugar, eat protein X. They will never tell you that proteins are very easily available and very cheaply available in India. We all consume dal, we all can consume eggs, chana, full. No, no, you should take protein X. One packet of protein X costs 1800 rupees. Imagine how much protein you can eat in 1800 rupees. Letero. One of the biggest fraud in pharmaceutical company is use of statin. You know, for last 30 years, cholesterol was the enemy. You must have heard cholesterol is bad for health. Cholesterol is bad, cholesterol is bad, cholesterol is bad. Every day through or night. The cholesterol limit started lowering down. Initially it was 300, up to at that time 300 was okay. It came to 250, it came to 200 and somebody shorted 150. And very easy to do it, take statin. If I tell you who was the richest pharmaceutical company in the world, it was Pfizer. It was about two products which are the most selling product on earth. First was Viagra and second was Statin. Imagine the profit a company was manufacturing Statin. Now every company is making Statin. Although Statin use was bringing problem to the patients. Some of the problem were having some muscular problems and it was hided from the public 
that the use of statin can cause you diabetic. Type 2 diabetes can be caused by statin. Misuse of Viagra we know very well. That it was prescribed in all conditions, freely available, the number one selling medicine in the world. All for commercial benefit. Then let us know about investigating malpractices by doctors and hospitals. Irrational and misuse of laboratory test. Once the patient comes, prescribe as much test as you can. By seeing it that he can afford 2,000, 3,000 or 5,000. Seeing on the capability of the patient to pay for it. X-ray, CT scan, and MRI. Recommendation without reasons. Sir, there the MRI religion. Because the cut in M MRI is maximum 1500 rupees. Vaccine lag religion. Irrational use of vaccines. Irrational radiotherapy and chemotherapy. One course of chemotherapy may cost from 1.5 lakhs to 2.5 lakhs. Irrational use. Whether needed or not needed, give it. If I tell you, as per the planning commission, which is now Niti Ayog, the third reason of poverty in India is medical expenses. So many people are passing into poverty because of sheer cost of medical treatment. The bias bias surgery which is done in AIMS in 1 lakh range from 4, 4 lakhs to 6 lakhs in private sector. MRI cost is about 15 to 2000 rupees in government hospital, 5000 rupees in private hospital. Another malpractice which started from US and came to India, bypass surgery. It really bypassed all the people in America. Anybody was having chest pain, everybody, they, Tom, Dick and Harry, they started doing bypass surgery on everybody. Now angiography is, angiography and angioplasty. The moment they will say that we will do the angiography and if needed we will put the stunts. The cost of one stunt is between 15,000 to 30,000. It is charged between 75,000 to 1.5 lakh. When one stunt is required you put three stunt. What is stop stopping it? Nothing. The cost will go high and the hospital will be happy. I remember very long, a long time I visited US in 2000. So my friend who was doing residency at that time told me that the management is not happy with him. I said, what has happened? He said that they monitor what kind of investigation I prescribe and, and one day they called me and say, you are not doing justice to the patients. I said, how? Any complaint? He said, complaint is not there, but we have found that you are prescribing very less investigations. And if we see, the patient has got a insurance cover up to five lakh dollars, and your investigation is not more than twenty thousand dollars. It's not good. You should prescribe more test. Same situation lies here now. If we see that how hospital doctors are working in a uh, corporate hospitals, they are mostly on a one mode that you have to generate a business. So certain percentage would be offered to you. If you fail, you will lose the job. Referral practices. Unethical practice, 
treatment of doctors and hospital i went just uh, went to mumbai mumbai has got a very strong network of family physicians everybody goes to the family physician and suppose uh, you go to the family physician then he say no no you need a neurologist and i am giving you the reference of this neurologist please go to him only you had no choice but to go to that neurologist only the family physician won't say that you can go to neurologist of your own choice no cat practice is very strong if you go to patna every rickshaw puller is on the pay list of doctors the moment a person comes out of the railway hospital ka railway station or like bus stand they will say oh aap baitho hum batate hain aapko kahan leke jayenge bahut badhiya doctor hai unse ilaaj karayenge doctors refer to other doctors for fee cut mostly super specialist service on only on that lot of cuts are being offered by the diagnostic labs rate range of 2 from up to 36% some doctor demand went to 40% of the total bill so imagine if you are, if you are favoring a lab you have to generate a business to them also to generate your own income these practices are very common another problem if you see uh, i have been in the medical negligence business as last 10 years this is a very common complaint against by the patients patients relatives ki hamare patient ko 10 din tak ventilator pe rakha ho to pehle hi mar gaya tha aur ya icu mein rakha gaya the cost of one day icu treatment range about 10000 to 30000 to 50000 depending on the icu of the hospital cost of put, if the person is a ventilator is 20 to 30000 per day now are all doctors or hospitals are doing the same no our laws are not clear end of life issues are not clear when to take off a person from ventilator is not written no guidelines are there there are no government guidelines are there i will request you to recommend to the government to make end of life issues guidelines how to handle a patient who is on ventilator for how many days you are going to keep him alive many many recommendations have been done to the government but the things are not moving we are stuck if i want to take organs from a patient i can take because the organ transplantation bill is act is there but if the patient is brain dead what to do issues are not clear medical law is not a priority in india there are so many laws which are being pending being shuttled from one corner to another one corner to another they don't have our parliamentarians they don't have a time for medical law they say other priorities are first why not this this is not a political issue medical law applies to all irrespective any party politics but it's not given a priority another issue which is there in medical malpractice is consent is a big issue we don't know how to take the consent because it has been never taught is a fact the doctors do not themselves know how to take the consent because medical law is not taught in the curriculum of 
मेडिकल काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया बिकॉज द मेडिकल काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया हैड नेवर हैड द टाइम टू रिवाइज द करिकुलम इन लास्ट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स एंड मेडिकल लॉ हैज कंप्लीटली चेंज इन सिंस लास्ट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स वी आर टीचिंग द सेम ओल्ड प्रैक्टिस सेम ओल्ड करिकुलम लाइक दैट दे हैव इन मैनी कमिटीज बट नो इफेक्ट आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट that you recommend that medical council india should make curriculum there should be revision at least once in 5 years and the new things should be incorporated consent issue if we see in broadly from the patient side there is no legal awareness in india there is very less legal awareness we are not aware of our own rights if you go to just cross delhi you go to sonipat panipat a small area once a patient is wheeled in and he is brought into the hospital the nurse will issue say to the relative bahar jaiye inka card banwa lijiye the person will go outside name him lega or bed we call it bed head ticket the bed head ticket is prepared on the back of it there is a consent form is there and it is written like that i hereby give consent to this hospital like that to perform this and this and sales and that and he will put his signature and give it to the nurse we do not know in india that consent has to be taken from patient nobody will even talk to the patient nobody is aware that patient signature are needed in this i would like to tell you about this very famous case samira kohli was a dr prabha manchanda samira kohli was a patient she was not uh, she were came for a completely uh, complaint of fert- infertility and dr prabha manchanda said that i will try to find out the reason and she was prescribed certain test when this test was performed and her abdomen was open doctor realized that it is better her uterus may be taken out so the patient was on the operating table and the patient's mother was sit- sitting outside and the consent from the mother was taken mother was old illiterate she said aapko jo theek lagta karti hai she signed on it and she removed her ovaries and uterus in a single stroke the woman became menopausal young women become menopausal it means either throughout life she has to take hormones and that is why this samira kohli and dr prabha manchanda ke supreme court a judgment gave a doctor has to seek and secure the consent of the patient before commencing a treatment are usse to poocho jiska ilaj hona hai yes consent is very much liberated in cases of emergency if a emergency patient a dying patient is wheeled into the hospital nobody waits for the consent to come in emergency cases to save the life any procedure can be done because time is so short either you act or you take the consent everything is allowed in emergency but not in a routine case where nothing emergency was there she could have closed it and later on or she could have taken consent and it was her will if she would have wanted she could have given consent or not we need to have awareness about this consent in major areas nobody no consumer awareness program should always focus on patient's rights nobody talks about patient's rights what are the patient's rights are there first and foremost right of a patient is to choose a doctor of his own choice patient can go to any doctor of his choice 
patient has a right to know about informed consent. This concept was given by Samira Kohli case. What is informed consent is that patient has the right to know from the doctor what disease is suffering from. This is surprisingly. So many times uh, doctors do not tell what the illness is. The common complaint by the patient, we have to ask what is the problem. The patient has the right to know what disease you are what disease I am suffering from, how you are going to make a diagnosis, how you are going to treat me, what would be the cost of treatment or any alternative treatment is available. This all concept is called concept of informed consent. And this is the right of the patient, just like right to information is a fundamental right, so right to informed consent is also a fundamental. If patient is not aware, doctor is not aware. Recently I have seen uh, one case in which a pregnant woman was there. She had a bleed at the time of delivery. We call this uh, uh, postpartum hemorrhage. And then when she was out inside, she was conscious. They went outside and took the consent to bring the uterus to nikalna padega. Uterus was taken out, the signature was taken from the Sasur Padanda. Who was totally uneducated person, he was not aware of the things. Sister brought a paper, they is but doctor ne kai sign kar di de, he said signed it. Such is the status of the consent in India. This I told you. How to address this issue? Now we know the malpractice is going on. I could not have noticed the last sentence of the previous slide. <laughs> Relatives problem in India. Yes, I, yes. <laughs> Relatives is a big problem in India. If one patient comes, four relatives come. And everybody speaks his own language. I was taught in AIMS that you can shoo away all the relatives by only one sentence and no, nobody would be seen. Just ask the patient who blood ki jaroot hai. They will all disappear. In a single stroke they will run away. Otherwise they will keep on standing. Relative problem is a very weak problem in India. आप किससे बात करें कितनों से बात करें सन इज देयर सन इन लॉ इज देयर फादर इन लॉ इज देयर फादर इन लॉज फ्रेंड इज देयर देन हिज फ्रेंड इज आल्सो देयर दैट्स अ बिग प्रॉब्लम इफ यू गो टू अमेरिका यू डोंट फाइंड अ सिंगल रिलेटिव यू हैव टू टॉक टू द पेशेंट ओनली हेयर यू हैव इन सो मेनी टाइम इट हैज हैपेंड there was a one uh, old man whose prostate operation, operation was to be done. So we asked him, Ke inka operation karana in se pooch le. In se kya poochna? In se kya poochna? Hum dete consent. Well, they don't even know ki that this old man can give consent. No, no, no. We will give the consent. This relative problem is unique in India not found anywhere in the world. Now, how to address this issue? Now we have to see the corrective measures, how can improve the situation. First is education and awareness in medical community and patient education. We should insist that every hospital should issue leaflets of information. It should give first information about the hospital, the charges, the doctors which are present, what is the cost of treatment, it should all should be transparent and should be there on the website and also on the boards which is there in the public place. 
there should be leaflets showing patient education tell them it's your right to refuse the treatment nobody tells them tell tell them that you have got a choice to take the treatment from this hospital or seek another opinion it is your choice if you are feel aggrieved you can go to the medical council against the doctor you can go to the consumer court i see lot and lot of advertisements by the consumers ye tv kharab ho gaya hai to consumer court jaiye but you hardly find any awareness about the patient ki where what options he has got very limited ones ask medical council of india to do medical law and curriculum that's very very essential which i already emphasized given on that information should be in public domain there should be some sites at least in medical council of india website or information should be there by some independent agencies blog should be written about the patient education patient consent how how to face address the issues legislation the best way to correct things is legislation we are proud that we have got a world's biggest constitution we are proud that we have got a maximum number of laws in the world but poor implementation new challenges new things do not come fast now you know that 3 377 section is being debated this the judgment passed by supreme court india is being criticized what supreme court can uh, say he said that the order passed by delhi high court is not in good taste it is not the duty of the court to make the law the duty to make law in india is by the legislative body and they questioned and they said that on section 377 of unnatural sex parliament should legislate but we don't find any response all political parties have refused to touch it there is somehow we are not very comfortable in making new laws end of life issues if it is goes to a parliament people will fight over it and those will do this hindu acts as that muslim act like that this like in our religion it is like that this in our religion like this legislation is somehow important we need amendments faster amendments in consumer act district forum ch- charges up to 20 lakhs state forum up to 1 crore if it is one above 1 crore we go to national commission a proposal is there that it r- should be raised from 20 to 50 in the district forum pending this last one year how slow we are there if it is not there somehow it our legislation should be flexible it should be prospective that by government regulation or by government notification the limit can be increased no we fix it till the next amendment comes not only patient need information doctor should also be taught about their rights the laws prevailing they should make aware that patients information what i feel in the end i would like to say we need more corrective measures from the government law should be made companies should be 
just like it was people are taking statins labs last 20 years and now the researchers come and say that it can cause type 2 diabetes i tell you the next focus next focus has changed from cholesterol to sugar the whole world is now after sugar kill it we don't want sugar but i can assure you as a doctor body co converts everything into sugar and consumes it so now fat tax is coming is already coming now this product is good this product is bad now so no new range of product would be there everything say very low sugar sales of sugar free will go up like this what i want to say in all such cases disclosure should be made compulsory by the companies who are making products there should be blogs written by the educationalist neutralist of writing about the product which are available in the market and say that instead of eating taking protein x please take x and dal or chana Thank you.